Welcome to the Oracle of Enlightenment. This is the Observer here, along with Mr. Timothy Zahn. Hi, everybody. Tim, it's great to have you here on the show. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, now you've had almost 40 novels published, or has it, has it been 40 novels? It'll be 40 novels next uh, month when Choice, Star Wars Choices of One comes out. And you've had nearly 90 short stories and novellas and four collections of short fiction. Wow, that's amazing. Well, thank you. It's been a busy few years. <laughs> What's your website? I don't have an actual website up and running, but I have a Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Timothy Zahn. I see. Um, and it has all the information you'll need. It's uh, contact information. Uh, we've got the covers of all my books, travel schedule, pub publication schedule, and all that. So it's got as much as a, as a website would have. And... Um, you were best known for your Star Wars novels as the author of the Quadril series, the Cobra series. What was that? Quadrail series. Yeah. The Cobra series and the Young Adult Dragonback series, correct? Correct, yes. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, let's see. There are various types. The Cobra series uh, is up to five books with a sixth coming out next January and three more in the works. Quadrail is a sort of a interstellar film noir type of thing, hard-boiled detective, uh, trains that run between the, the, the various systems in large tubes. Uh, the last book of that series should come out in about a year, I think. Uh, Young Adult Dragonback series is finished uh, a couple of years ago. It's a 14-year-old boy and an alien that looks like a small dragon who have to get together to... Uh, uh, prevent genocide of uh, Dracos's people. Uh, it, it is science fiction, though it sounds like it's fantasy. Uh, what else were we doing? Um, the Cobra series? Cobra, I, I mentioned the Cobras. Black Collars, it's uh, just a trilogy. There are three books out in that. Mm -hmm. And I am starting a new series called Sybil's War, S-I-B-Y-L, about a 19-year-old girl who's essentially kidnapped to an alien starship where she's put on a work crew with humans who are revamping the thing, and and there's sort of uh, odd things happening aboard this ship. So the first book is almost finished. It should be out sometime, oh, I'm assuming next year or late next year. I see. Um, what about uh, Terminator Salvation Trial by Fire? Uh, I did two, two Terminator Salvation books keying off of the movies, one that was a prequel about... Oh, a few months before the movie Terminator Salvation, that was called um, uh, From the Ashes. And then I did one called uh, Trial by Fire that takes place about two weeks after the movie. Uh, it would be nice to do some more Terminator books. It would be nice to see more Terminator movies, but with the license currently kind of up in the air, don't know what's going to happen with all of that. Yeah, I thought the TV series ended kind of prematurely, and I thought it was going really well. And it it kind of bothered me that they didn't incorporate it into the movie series. I, I enjoyed the series. Uh, right near the end, they had kind of a bobble, in my opinion. They were, they were suddenly seemed to be directionless for a couple, three episodes, but they were picking back up again when they unfortunately got canceled. Uh, the people who did uh, Seracron and uh, Terminator Salvation made the, the conscious decision not to incorporate the TV show into Salvation simply because there was too much, it was going to be too hard to do continuity that way. So it was not just that they forgot about the series, they deliberately decided we're going to stay with the movie mythos and keep the TV mythos kind of its own separate, separate Terminator saga. I see. Well, why don't you tell us something about, more about your uh, Star Wars work? Well, Star Wars, um, my first Star Wars book was Heir to the Empire, the first book of the Thrawn trilogy. We are actually, or Del Rey is actually bringing out a 20th anniversary special edition this uh, September that'll have all the original plus a, a foreword, afterward, about 200 annotations that I've put in and, uh, along with my editor, and a, uh, a brand new 18,000 word novella uh, that kind of bridges between choices of one and heir to the empire 
Choices of One is the new book. It comes out uh, in July. It is a follow-up to Allegiance uh, taking place between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, so a, month, a, a few months after uh, the Battle of Yavin, where uh, we've got the young, still inexperienced, somewhat naive Luke Skywalker, uh, uh, Han Solo, who's not entirely sure he, yet whether he really wants to commit to this rebellion thing, Princess Leia, who's as gung ho and you know uh, whatever as as always, and also Mara Jade uh, as the Emperor's hand, who's going out around being uh, doing troubleshooting for Emperor Palpatine. I see, fascinating. Um, so, what, tell us a little bit about your uh, short stories and novellas and collections of short fictions? Uh, short stories, uh, I started with short stories back when I first started writing in, uh, when was that, it would have been 78, I think. Uh, and for several years I did short stories intermixed with working on novels and such. Um, it's a different form than novels. You've gotta be very t much tighter in your plotting. You don't have as much time to develop. Uh, uh, an idea, so it has to be kind of a short, shorter idea. I, ideas have their own natural length, I think. Some are novel length, some are short story. Uh, and I still do a few short stories, usually for anthologies these days. Um, but yeah, I'm someplace in the 80s or 90s, haven't really counted lately. I've also done a couple of comic books back in the day. Uh, oh, what really, kind? Uh, I did a Star-Lord trilogy. Uh, Marvel was re trying to revive that character. Uh, did the three book, uh, three book series on that. I guess it didn't really take, and then um, they've since revived Star-Lord again, I think, with different authors and artists. Uh, I did a Mara Jade comic, six-parter with Mike Stackpole, uh, done a couple other things. I've tried to break in at other times, and the, the comic book field just uh, was colla uh, not collapsing, contracting at that time that I was trying to break in. my Bad timing on my part, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, that happens. Um, how many conventions do you do in a year? How many conventions? It depends. Typically I do six to eight or so. Um, mostly I will go pretty much any place that they, they'll pay my way uh, and you know, put me up uh, unless it's conflicting with some other convention or, uh, or whatever. But I'm doing Origins this year. I'm also doing San Diego Comic Con, uh, Dragon Con. I've just been signed. The big players. <laughs> the big players, partly because of the new Star Wars book um, and helping to promote the 20th anniversary Heir to the Empire, and uh, Necronomicon. And, and I've also I've just been signed. That's in October in Tampa, and I've just been signed to do a two-day Star Wars fan days in Dallas, and then I've got two conventions already scheduled for 2012 and one in 2013. Mm -hmm. So people are starting to invite me early and the calendar is starting to fill up. That's always a good thing. That's a good thing, yes. It's good promotion. Yeah. And to get out and meet people. Yes. Now, the collections of short fiction, are they like the short stories or something different? They're, they're collection, collections of mostly previously published short stories. Uh, there's in in a couple of the the collections there's a new one the they're uh, i think all of i think all four are out of print at the moment but they're probably available in in secondhand booksellers or or, or such but yeah it's, it's basically somebody wanted to do a collection so we pulled together some of the my best stories or ones that kind of had a thematic connection and and uh and uh so we just made a, a, a collection out of those. I see. Um, now, what's the difference between writing for the novels and the novellas? Like, how much of a difference is there? It's a matter of length. A, nov a, a short story, by I think Hugo Award rules, goes up to, I think it's 7,500 words. A novelette then goes up to 18,000 or 17,500 a novella goes to 40,000, and anything above is considered a novel. So it's a matter of length. It's, it's the happy difference between short story and novel. I can, I've got more room to play with the, the ideas or development of the plot or the characters, but it's not committing to an entire novel. Uh, so somewhere in the, I, I've done 
oh, half a dozen. Of the, my, my two uh, Honor Harrington short stories are, I've actually been novellas, I believe, lengthwise. Yes, Honor Harrington is an amazing character. Yeah, it was, it's always fun to uh, be invited by David Weber to play in the Honor Harrington universe. Yeah. David's been on the show, too. He's yes. a wonderful guy. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes. So what got you started in writing? I watched a bad TV show, decided I could write a better story than that, and sat down and wrote a story over the next couple of weeks, which was no better than the show, but it showed me how much fun writing could be. So that was in 70... 78, I believe. What was the show? It was a, a show called The Invisible Man. It had David <laughs> McCallum in it. Do you remember that yes, show? Yes, I do. <laughs> I liked the idea. The special effects were decent, but it, some of the plots just were not very good. Yeah. And this one was one I really was annoyed at. I don't remember which episode it was, but it was just, oh, come on. So I sat down and wrote a story. 70s action TV tend to do that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. I think uh, Gemini Man was the more superior of the two on that one in the 70s. <laughs> I don't think I watched Gemini Man. I mean, I, I think I picked up mostly on Invisible Man because I liked the original novel by H.G. Wells. Right. And there was a British TV show I, I picked up. Uh, it was showing one of the independent stations when I was in high school. So I picked up some episodes of that and liked it. And, of course, it had David McCallum, who I'd always liked from Matt oh, from yes. Uncle. Agreed. So, I, and I, it's not David McCallum's fault, because I like him on NCIS, too. It's just he didn't have anything to work with on, on the, this show, unfortunately. So, um, but, yeah, that's, that got me started. I uh, wrote for a couple of years before I sold anything. Uh, that was in, what is it, uh, 78. It came out, uh, September 79 was my first published story. And uh, kept going with the short stories and novels, and so far the career seems to be working okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Um, what's the difference between writing for your own universes and writing in, like, uh, Star Wars, Terminator, Honor Harrington, writing in someone else's universe? When you write in Star Wars or somebody else's stuff, you're in a defined playing field. It's sort of like you're playing basketball. You've got sidelines, you know what the rules are, you've got a certain number of players you have on the field. So it's, it's a regimented, you can play however you want to within those rules, but you do have rules. When I'm doing my own stuff, it's much more like Calvin Ball, where I can make things up and as long as I'm consistent, uh, Calvin Ball from Calvin and Hobbes, in case somebody doesn't know that, which I can't imagine, but never mind. Uh, I can make up my own rules, I can make up my own characters, scenario, universe, star drive, however I want to do it. So I've got more freedom there. On the other hand, with something like Star Wars, I have characters the audience already, the readers already know. And that saves a lot of time and effort in not fleshing them out so much as, as, as just uh, introducing them. That I can then, they, they know how Han is supposed to be certainly between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Right. They, and if I can, they know what he's supposed to, if I can capture that essence of him and his, in his dialogue and, and actions, then uh, it's pretty smooth sailing. Um, and of course, the, the, mark, the, the audience for a Star Wars book is bigger than for one of my originals. So uh, I get a larger readership and it's just plain fun to visit the galaxy right. far, far away. Well, besides... Um, getting more more promotion, like you said, in someone else's universe. Do you ever feel the pressure of uh, making sure you stay faithful to someone else's character as opposed to what you can do with your own? Well, that's always the risk when you when you go to somebody else's, which is one reason I have taken... I'm careful about taking only books that I think I can do a good job with and think that I, that I understand the characters. Um, I, there, are, there are many franchises out there I would simply turn down on the grounds I don't think I can capture that essence correctly. I would not try to do a Buffy uh, or a Firefly, much as I you know, like Firefly. I don't know if I could capture the characters correctly. And I don't want to... You know, if, if somebody offered, I, I would think long and hard and maybe give it a shot, but I would be very nervous about it. Star Wars, for some reason, just comes easy for, for me. I see. Um, besides what we've already discussed, are there any of your other novels that you'd like to talk about or mention? 
Um, no, I think we've covered most of it. I've got a bunch of standalone novels, which I always liked reading that kind of book when I was growing up, especially with a new author, rather than you know, trying a new series by somebody. It was nice to get a standalone book. And you could sample the writer's style and, and ideas and see if you, you liked them. Uh, unfortunately, standalones are not all that uh, popular among editors anymore. Everybody, they all want series. Um, I have a Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Timothy's on. It's got a full bibliography of, of everything. So if, if people are interested in looking and seeing what are parts of series, which are independent and all of that, uh, you know, hop on over there and take a look. What got you started? Oh, I'm sorry, I already asked that one. Um, my question was, um, did, what is your advice for young writers? The, the fundamental thing a writer needs to do is not give up. Uh, a lot of people out there will never be published because they gave up someplace along the line. So you have to keep writing, uh, keep editing, keep learning what you're doing, keep honing your craft, uh, learning, uh, developing your style. Um, read other people's writing, see what you like about it, what you don't like about it, you know, incorporate the stuff you like or figure out how to adapt that to your particular style learn from what they did that you don't like so you don't put that in your stuff um, the traditional markets are not as numerous as they once were the magazines are are still hanging on some of them but uh, not the the heyday of the you know, 70s and 80s when there were lots of markets out there um, but there's a lot of online possibilities yeah, now say. that uh, weren't around when I was first starting. Like ebooks and things. Ebooks and such. Uh, there's you can, you can promote things on your own website and such. So there are avenues to getting published that I didn't have, uh, but it's never going to happen if you don't keep at it. So right. keep writing, keep learning, and good luck. Thank you very much. Um, when you're dealing with fans, I, just out of curiosity, what is the fan base like compared to your original works as opposed to the ones you've done for other people's universes? I mean, has it, is it kind of different? or It's not that different. I mean, Star Wars is very similar to my own style. Again, it's easy for me to write because I'm not really doing that much different. I'm using different characters, but my style and everything doesn't really change particularly. Um, I like to have intrigue, you know, adventure, PG to PG-13 battle type things. I'm not with a lot of blood and guts and, and gratuitous sex or anything like that. And that's pretty much the same with my normal stuff. So my readership is generally a kind of a subset of uh, my, gen my, my original stuff is a subset of the Star Wars audience. Um, there are a few people who like my original stuff who have not read any of my Star Wars books for whatever reason, but mostly, mostly it goes the other direction. People read Star Wars and decide they like that and try out something else. And if they like my Star Wars books, they probably will like something else. So, And my fans are very, very polite, very intelligent. I mean, I, the ones I've met... Um, I can imagine fans of certain other writers being scary. I, I don't know if I would want to be in a room alone with, with uh, a cross-section of Stephen King's fans. I know many of them, maybe even most of them, are really nice people, but there'd probably be a fringe element that would scare me. I've not run into that with Star Wars or my, my other fans. Uh, um, I'm sure there are weirdos out there as well there, but, uh, yeah, I've... I've I enjoy coming to conventions, meeting the, the, the readers and the fans. Uh, it's just, it's good to get out of the office and to remind myself why I'm actually sitting there slaving over this silly computer. <laughs> and there's nitpickers in every universe, right? <laughs> there are nitpickers. Um, mostly, I, I've escaped any problems with the prequel, Star Wars prequels, erasing some of my stuff. And I'm really good at dancing around and, and what we called hand-waving back in physics as, well, that looks like an error, but here's how to explain it. So um, th there are not a lot of nits that get picked with my stuff, fortunately. That's great. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss? No, I think we've pretty well covered it. <laughs>
All right. Well, thank you very much. It's been an honor and a privilege to interview you, sir. Thank you for having me on. Timothy Zahn, everyone, courtesy of Origins Convention. And welcome to the Oracle of Enlightenment. This is The Observer here along with... Leah Sugar from Out of the Box Publishing. Hi, Leah. It's good to have you here on the show. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Now, um, why don't you tell us about um, the games that you put out? Out of the Box Publishing, we really focus on making family-friendly games that are fun for the parents and fun for the kids. Um, they have to be you have to be able to learn them within a couple of minutes and play them within about a half an hour. So we do party games, card games, and then some some light strategy. Um, definitely do some educational, but they've got to be fun first. I see. How do people go about getting your games? Um, our games are available at most specialty stores um, on Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble as well. So um, we try to stick more to the specialty. We like that uh, they can help out um, their customers in, in finding new games and finding interesting and different games. Can you give us uh, some of your titles? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're best known for Apples to Apples, which we came out with about uh, 13 years ago. And uh, that was sold to Mattel about three years ago. We've got a lot of great new games that definitely fill that, that type of game that are um, easy to learn, fast to play, and very social games. Uh, Word on the Street is definitely our best-selling game right now. We're also very well known for 789, which is a speed math card game, math-based card game. Um, and then the 10 Days series, which is um, invented by Alan Moon and Aaron Weissbloom, Um so some fairly well-known inventors, and it's a lightweight strategy game where you're trying to make trips through different continents, countries, um, using different tiles, and uh, trying to set them up in a way that you can get from one place to the next each day. So it's really fun. You can kind of imagine yourself going on a trip, but you're also learning geography at the same time. That's great. Um, how many games have you put out over the years? Oh, total games that we've uh, done over the years, probably about... 45 to 50, I would say we have got about 30 right now in our catalog. Um, definitely moving more towards um, more party games. The card games do really well for us, but um, continuing to expand the 10-day series. And then a lot of people also know our Pirates vs. Pirates and Ninja vs. Ninja line. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to expand that as well. I love Pirates vs. Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That one's um, done, done really well for us. And, of course, it has John Kavalik little figurines in it. And so everybody loves those. Um, they're the most adorable little pirates ever. And the, um, the four-sided dice with the bone through it is kind of fun as well. So. Not to mention apples to apples. I've always found that to be a very interesting game. <laughs> <laughs> Works for some people, doesn't for other people like every game. Um, but definitely uh, great for big big groups. And we like those kind of games where people can come and go as they please um, that are really easy to pull out at like the family picnic. You know grandma's going to love it. You know the little kids are going to love it. And um, I think it's, we call them gateway games, but I think they're a great transition for people who have never really played board games or haven't played them since they were a kid to get them more into board gaming. I think a lot of those people have a hard time just going to the store and picking out a game from the big selection that's out there. So uh, if we can use games like ours to get people um, excited about gaming and interested in gaming, I think that helps grow the whole community. That's great. Uh, what's the website again? www.otb-games.com. That's great. Do you have anything else you'd like to discuss? Uh, we've got a couple of new games this year. We've got uh, Shake and Take, which is kind of a wild party game. You're grabbing pens, circling um, little aliens on a sheet. It's a lot of fun, really easy to play. Again, that's like one that works really well for the whole group. We've got Vocabulary, which is another party game. Um, you're building words based on crazy definitions. And then we've got Bug Out, which is the youngest game we've ever done before. So it's ages five and up, but also fun for the adults. And that one's got a little bit of a twister element and a matching element in it, too. So that one's uh, that one will be out in the middle of July, and that one um, should be a lot of fun as well. That's going to be in our card game line. So those are the new games we've got coming out for this year. Okay, thank you very much for granting us this interview. Thank you so much. Leah Sugar of Out of the Box Games, everyone. Thanks. That was great.